Hey guys, welcome to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson, episode two in our peak week for bikini competitor series. We're going to talk about your body type. We finished up episode one talking about, um, you know, the, the, this kind of that, that final look that, that the judges are looking for in the division criteria. And of course, it's always helpful to be the perfect mesomorph. I, I have a, a, a really, you know, great, great friend and competitor who, was trying to win her IFBB pro card in figure. And, and I've talked about this before on our, our show, Adam. And I said, you know, you're, you, you can almost, you almost have that bikini look. You'd almost have to lose a little muscle. Like you're almost too qualified for bikini, but it'd be easier to lose a little bit of size and then walk in and just be able to dominate bikini. And we tried that and, you know, she won her pro card just like that and is now placing extremely well. Not every woman has that ability to just carry in the muscle to sacrifice. And so when you look at somebody who may be too muscular for bikini, you're almost kind of leaning into wellness or figure. Uh, but, but what do you consider the, the perfect body type? And then how do you help clients on either side of that, you know, try and get into that, as you said, perfect strike zone? Well, you know, when we talk about perfect body type I'll always find that those are the people who are right in the middle you know they're they're probably more the the um you know mesomorph than anything and, and the reason why is they can get lean enough to be competitive but they typically also have enough muscle mass so they're kind of best of both worlds and uh, we don't get those clients too often, but we do get them. Um, I actually recently had a new client come to me and uh, we did about 12 week prep and uh, we, we did have to cut relatively fast, but her body responded very well. We did have to go relatively low calorie, but she held on to muscle so well and she, she lost body fat very efficiently. Um, probably one of my easiest clients I've ever worked with. And, uh, you know, when she won her show, I, I thought, my God, like I, I really hardly had to do anything as a coach because she, she just looked so darn good. Um, I probably couldn't have even peaked her and she would have been fine, but the peaking gave her that extra like 5% edge to just, you know, really make her pop on stage. Um, I'll find that the hardest people to work with are the people that are the endomorphs. And uh, they usually just struggle to get lean enough for the division criteria in the first place. But if they do, they have mounds of muscle that they can, uh, you know, use as an advantage. But I find with those clients, it usually takes them a season um, two or three to really find themselves competitive with reverse dieting then getting back onto the diet. But if you're patient enough with those people, they can do very well. Um, and then on the other end, you have your ectomorphs who are always going to get lean. They're going to have great conditioning. Uh, the, the challenge with them is getting enough muscle on them. Um, so typically, sometimes I'll let those ectomorphs get a little bit leaner because that added leanness almost gives them um, more illusion of size. Um, and then also on top of that, maybe more aggressive peaking strategies just for additional fullness. You're, you're hardly ever going to see those people give up conditioning with a lot of food. It's interesting you say that. I'm, I'm going to bring this up in our next episode as a little bit of a case study. But um, how much do you think we, when, you're, when you're looking for those people who are really trying to build the shape? So, so I realize endomorphs are always going to be a struggle to get lean enough for a division like this to just get that conditioning that they, they really do uh, have to work harder and, and, and potentially give up some of that size. Um, but somebody who doesn't necessarily carry the muscle. So you've got that ectomorph who is getting lean enough. And when they finally get lean enough, which may be easier for them, but now it's like, wow, where did all my, my curves and size go? Uh, do, do you find that like we've talked about with men's physique, it's, it's kind of a chest and abs game. Is, is bikini more of a shoulders and glutes game? Like, is that, you, you really need to focus on that to at least give, as you said, the illusion of size? Yeah, I think that that really helps create the better frame. And I, I think Brett Contreras said best the other day, um, you probably saw this video where, you, you know, and I, I have girls do this too, where they do 30 sets of glutes, but they're also not training their back a whole ton or their, their chest. They're primarily training 
glutes and shoulders. And uh, that saves uh, metabolic processes for them to recover um, because they're not breaking down their legs as much or they're not breaking down their arms. You know, those, uh, those efforts I'll say are kind of a waste for those people for the most part, you know, unless they have really, really stickly arms, but, you know, you kind of want to focus on the most important things in their division, at least initially. Mm. Yeah, well said. I'll bring that up again a little bit later too, because I, I just spoke with Brett again at the Pro Physique Experience, and I, I really got into his mind a little bit more with training, and uh, and we have some very very similar philosophies that are pretty counter to what's happening in the industry at large. So uh, so great stuff, guys. Stay tuned for episode three, and we're going to continue this series in Peak Week for Bikini Competitors. <laughs>